Hello gentlemen, now we've talked about significant figures and learned how to determine how many significant figures are present within a measurement. Um, now we're going to learn how to account for significant figures in our calculations, which is very important to be as precise as you can as a, as a scientist. Now, in scientific calculations, it is important to be aware of and account for the uncertainty in your measured quantities. The least certain measurement limits the certainty of the calculated quantity and thereby determines the number of significant figures in that final answer. Again, the least certain measurement limits the certainty of that calculated quantity and determines the number of significant figures in your final answer. Your final answer has one digit of uncertainty. Now, when, when accounting for significant figures in your calculations, there are some rules. The rules differ depending on what operations you are doing. For addition and subtraction, we abide by this rule. The answer has the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest decimal places. When the answer contains more than the correct number of significant figures, it must be rounded off. Now, here's an example. We have these three numbers being added together. 50.321, 7.3, 21.24 added together. Now, 50.321 has three decimal places after the decimal. One, two, three. That's what we're looking at. So, that's what we count. We have three decimal places. 7.3 has one decimal place after the decimal. 21.24 has two decimal places after the decimal. The rule says the answer has the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest decimal places. 7.3 has the fewest decimal places, so this is going to determine my number of significant figures in my final answer. So if I do all this mathematics out, I get 78.861. Now, to get my final answer, accounting for significant figures, I have to round this accordingly. So my final answer will be 78.9. So my final answer has the same number of decimal places as the value with the, with the fewest decimal places. So I have to abide by this one here. So this number only goes to this decimal place because this one only goes to that decimal place so my final answer is here I round up because 6 is higher than 5 we round up that becomes 9 so I have 78.9 as my final answer here of course we have some units associated with this because we are talking about measurements but this is addition and subtraction now multiplication and division will have different rules So when multiplying or dividing, the answer has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. When the answer contains more than the correct number of significant figures, again, the answer must be rounded. Here's our example. This board's kind of cluttered, so please follow along. We're going to measure the volume of this box. My length is 9.8 centimeters, my width 8.3 centimeters, my height 1.011 centimeters. To find the volume of a box, we know we use length times width times height. So my length here, width here, height here. My, my length, excuse me, has three significant figures. One, two, three. You learn how to find out how many significant figures are in a measurement in the last video. So please review if you don't know. In my width, I have two significant figures. My height, I have four. One, two, three, four. The rule says the answer has the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. The fewest significant figures are here, two. That means our final answer can contain no more than two significant figures. Once we do this mathematics out and multiply all these quantities together, we get 82.402566 cubic centimeters. Now, 
I can only have two significant figures because of that value there. So this has to be rounded to 82 cubic centimeters. This 4 does not tell that 2 to round up, so it must stay the same. We have 82 because of the two significant figures here. So two sig figs here, two sig figs here, with the least amount of sig figs in my measurements there. Now, a side note. In our calculations, exact numbers, which you learned about last video, are assumed to have an infinite number of significant figures. Infinite. Thus, they do not put limits on your answers when using them in your calculations. Here's an example here that's boxed off to the, to the far, far end here. Now, <clears throat> this is an infinite number, that there are 12 inches in one foot. We know that. That's exact. Sorry, not infinite. That's exact. That's an exact number. Excuse me. This is an exact number. We know that there are 12 inches in one foot. There's no uncertainty there. That is, you know, accepted, an accepted value. These are exact numbers. So if I was asked the question, how many feet are in 525 inches? That's a conversion that we could do. We know that there are 12 inches per one foot, so I can set up this equation here. 525 inches times one foot over 12 inches. Inches cancel out because they're being divided by one another. Equals 43.75 feet. Now, this is an exact number. This 1 and this 12 do not alter the number of significant figures. These have an infinite amount. That's considered infinite. But what will alter the number of significant figures is this number here. <clears throat> this number has, this is not infinite, this is a number that I'm, I'm giving you. It's a measured value. It has three significant figures, so it will determine that my final answer will have three significant figures. So this 43.75 will be rounded to 43.75. Eight feet. So gentlemen, this is how you account for significant figures in your calculations through addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and using exact numbers. Take notes. We'll do more practice with this in class. Adios.